What's up everyone? Happy Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. For this week's video, we're going to be going over a very cool story from the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And just for some context, this book came out in 1937, so almost 100 years ago from today. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because the story from the book is called Three Feet from Gold, which takes place in the Gold Rush era. So that was probably the years between like the late 1800s and early 1900s, just for a little context. So let's get into it. Uh, back then, there was this guy named R.U. Darby, and his uncle was completely caught by the gold fever in the gold rush days. And his uncle's plan was to actually head out west and dig and grow rich. So Darby and his uncle and his whole family were from Maryland, and his uncle's plan was to go from Maryland to Colorado with a pickaxe and a shovel and start digging and eventually grow rich. And his uncle knew this was going to be a very hard journey to embark on, but his lust for gold was definite, and he knew this was like his burning desire to get this done. So his uncle heads to Colorado and arrives there and begins digging. And after a few weeks of very hard, intensive labor, he was actually rewarded by the discovery of finding like a very big shining ore. And he knows now at this point, okay, he's like on the, the cusp of actually making something happen and making this dream, his definite purpose, come alive. So he covers up his ore he just found and he heads back over to Maryland. He tells all of his friends and family about this big hit he just got, this big shining ore and he's gonna become rich. So essentially he raises money throughout his relatives and community whatnot, and they buy the machines, and he ships the machines from Maryland over to Colorado. Now the people who are actually gonna be running the mine are Darby and his uncle. So now Darby's actually joining his uncle on this gold rush pursuit. When they get there, they immediately start digging with the machines they just got, and the first car of ore was actually mined and shipped over to a smelter. And the results have proved that they have one of the richest mines in Colorado. So start doing math now and they're like, okay, we only need maybe two or three more of these cars and we'll be able to pay back the money from the machines we just borrowed and you know, become financially free and super successful and rich. Um, so the next day they're super excited to get down and start drilling again. And as soon as the drills went down, up went the hopes of Darby and his uncle. So what ended up happening was the vein of the gold ore completely disappeared and you know, essentially they came to the end of the rainbow. There's no more gold for them. So they knew they had to kind of make this happen. So desperately now they're drilling and drilling and drilling, trying to pick up the vein again. Um, and again and again and again, but still nothing's coming out of it. So finally, Darby and his uncle decide to quit. Now this is a very big turning point in the story to remember. So they decide to quit and they're gonna head back to Colorado. But first they have all this machinery. So they sell it to a local junk man maybe a few hundred bucks and most people think that you know most junk men are dumb but this one is definitely not so what the junk man actually does is he realizes okay I don't really know what I'm doing I don't know anything about gold mining but it's got a very good deal on this expensive machinery he probably would be able to make money just off the machinery alone so he actually hires a mining engineer to take a look at the mine and do some kind of calculating and take measurements and whatnot to see if it's worth actually going back in and digging where they just stopped so the engineer does all of these measurements and comes up with a plan. And he advises the junk man that the reason the project had failed previously was because the owners before were not familiar with something called fault lines. So his calculations show that the vein would be just three feet from where Darby and his uncle had stopped digging or stopped drilling. Um, and this is exactly where they found the gold again. The vein opened back up three feet from there. Uh, the junk man took millions and millions of dollars from the mine because he knew enough to seek expert counsel before giving up or before starting on a journey. So he went out and he found his expert and the expert knew, okay, it's three feet from gold. So he ends up making a crazy amount of money, multi, multi millions of dollars. And most of the money that went to the machinery back then was actually from R.U. Darby. So Darby went out to all of his relatives and neighbors and whatnot and raise the money because they all had faith in him. So it wasn't his uncle who actually raised the money, it was Darby. So all this now is falling back on Darby, who at the time was a very young person. And you know he borrowed all his money from his relatives and whatnot, and he did end up paying every dollar of it, even though it ended up being years, 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 years later. And long afterward, after Darby you know, had this happen three feet from gold, he actually recouped his loss many times over. And this happened when he made the simple discovery that desire can be transmuted into gold. Now, what does that mean? So this came to Darby when he came into the business of selling life insurance. You know, maybe he wasn't a young man anymore, probably mid-age mid or becoming later on in age. 
But he remembered that he lost a huge fortune because he stopped three feet from gold. Again, that's the name of the story. So Darby profited by the experience of his now chosen work of selling life insurance by the simple method of saying to himself, I stopped three feet from gold, but I will never stop because men say no when I ask them to buy insurance. So now in this later stage in life, Darby is one of a small group of maybe 50 or maybe less than 50 men who sell more than $1 million a year annually in life insurance. And if you think about this, back in the early 18, sorry, early 1900s, this is an insane amount of money. Even today, a million dollars is a good amount of money, but back then, $1 million was an insane amount of money. And Darby says that he owes his stickability to the lesson from his quitability in the gold mining business. Now remember when I said this is a very big turning point when they decided to quit? He says he owes his stickability to the lesson from his quitability in the gold mining business. Now before we get into it, I wanna just read an actual excerpt from the book. And it says, before success comes in any man's life, he is sure to meet with much temporary defeat and perhaps some failure. When defeat overtakes a man, the easiest and most logical thing to do is quit. That is exactly what the majority of men do. More than 500 of the most successful men in this country that has ever known told the author that their greatest success came just one step beyond the point at which defeat had overtaken them, and that failure is a trickster with a keen sense of irony, and that it takes great delight in tripping one when they're almost at success within his arm's reach. So it's a very big common thing throughout life, and I think this is an amazing story because it relates so much into almost anything in life that you're going to quit on. Um, for the simple thing, if you're on a diet, maybe you want to lose weight and you keep on dieting, going to the gym and you're seeing the scale's not really going down and you give up, you're maybe that close to actually losing the extra couple of pounds or whatever it might be. You might be three feet from gold in that situation. If you're on the sales side with me as well, you know, it might be one more call. That one more call could be the three feet from gold or that one more meeting you go on, whatever it might be. This is a very important and powerful lesson we could take into it. And I think the cool thing to reflect on now is when was the time maybe we quit three feet from gold where somebody else was able to reap the rewards of something that we gave up on? And hopefully we can keep this in the back of our mind going forward to say that we're not gonna stop three feet from gold. You know, exactly what Darby said um, back then, he said, um, I stopped three feet from gold, but I will never stop because men say no when I ask them to buy insurance. So this is taking this lesson in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have not yet, definitely read Think and Grow Rich. See you guys next week.